Hey, Mr. B, this is part two of the PV92 video series. And the first slide here is from the video where we talked about the crime scene investigator, where we talked about the power of discrimination. And what we had was this table where it was given to you. This was data that was collected by other people. I guess here's the, the link down here. Um, but this would be for allele 5 and Caucasians. What's the chance, what's the frequency of a Caucasian having? Pretty small. Um, Latinos, they didn't find it out of 140 people. So the point being here that um, alleles can vary by um, your ethnicity, um, definitely, but then also by populations. And so how these numbers are generated that ultimately is what this video is about. Okay, so what we were doing in our PV92 lab is we were testing for either no insertion or you have an insertion of this ALU. And, uh, you know, here's some, here's some results again, as I talked about before, the ladder. Here is the standards, which I had made up. I walked through that yesterday, where this would be the plus plus. That means that it would be a homozygous. Uh, plus plus, here's homozygous, plus minus, and heterozygous, where it has both plus and minus. So both both mom, like one mom had it, had the, the insertion, and dad didn't, or vice versa. And then here would be some examples. Here would be like student A. Well, clearly they uh, did not have the insertion, so it went faster in the gel. Here the student uh, had a, a minus, had a, sorry, they had the insertion. They were plus plus. Here was a plus uh, minus. You're going to see this the second little ghost thing here, um, it, that, and that's real. And this is potentially a plus minus, as I mentioned before. But anyhow, um, so keeping that in mind, we're, we're talking about alleles here, right? Alleles and then ultimately frequencies of someone having an allele. Um, so this comes down to, okay, we, we're going to amplify our ALU insert, which we did, whoops, um, and we're gonna, what we're going to do here is we're going to calculate our expected allelic and genotypic frequencies and do this thing called a chi-square test, which is a statistical tool. All right, so here's, here we go. First of all, let's say that this was a class of, um, yeah, I guess you'd say two classes, total of 38 people. And we ran the gels, which you guys are going to be doing uh, on Monday. And what we had here is 25 people found out that they were plus plus. Five people were plus minus, and then eight people were minus minus. So if you just said, okay, 25 out of 38, the frequency would be 0.66, or 66% of people had plus plus. 13% plus minus, 21% um, were minus minus, okay? And so you know, this would be, okay, the plus is just basic math here. This is what I was doing, right? Taking the number of people with the genotype being plus plus. If I'm talking in the uh, packet, which, you know, the student manual here that you guys will be working through on Monday, when they're talking about genotypes, they're talking about, okay, are you plus plus, are you plus minus, or are you minus minus? All right. And uh, so, you know, they do the math, and then if you add up all these frequencies, what would you expect? Well, it should add up to one, or in other words, 100% of the people had some genotype, right? It just makes sense. Okay, but why I'm, I'm just telling you, okay, add all those up to one will make sense on the next slide. Okay, so what I'm showing here is, on this slide, it's, it's a little different. What you're looking at is, Let's just look at how many people had the plus allele. And that's add up the total number of plus alleles. So this was our data that we got. And we'll, we'll collect data like this for our class. Okay, so we're going to be doing this, but only with our class. So we'll, get, we'll generate all these numbers. It'll be real numbers. This is just fictional here. Okay, so if 25 people have uh, the plus plus... So that means that there's 50 total alleles, right? Because like what we're gonna, what we're after is we're gonna ultimately calculate out the frequency of the plus allele. All right. So we had five individuals here that did have the plus allele. So we would add those two together, and so in our population here, we had a total of 55 plus alleles. 
And so um, the total number of alleles that are possible, you know, because it's either you had a plus or a minus, right? You, basically, everybody has one of those. So you've got, it's going to be two times the population. So in our case here, the total number of alleles that we have would be a total of 76, right? Okay, so now that lets us do some math. That lets us get a frequency, okay? So this number here, P, you're going to see this a lot um, on Monday. When I'm talking about P, what that means is a frequency of plus alleles. So how can we get the, getting this data? Here's, we had 55 positive alleles out of a total population of 76. So think about, hmm, what can I do with math to get the frequency? Well... What you could do is take the total number of positive alleles and divide it by the total number of alleles possible, right? And hopefully you thought about that, and yeah, that's what you do. Okay, so the frequency, when they're going to talk about P, you're going to see this P, they're talking about P, what they're talking about is the positive alleles. The frequency of that is 0.72, or 72% is another way of thinking of it. So... Remember when I said all those frequencies would have to add up to 100 on the previous slide? Well, that's why I mentioned this, because, okay, so if 72% of people had plus alleles, well, then, uh, you know, you can just do the math. If 100% of people have alleles, well, then Q being the minus alleles, um, that would be 0.28, okay? So it's just those two would add up to 1. Okay, so now we know how many people out of our population, the frequency out of this population of 38, the frequency that a positive allele turned up, whether it was plus plus or plus minus, doesn't matter. It's the total frequency was 72% of the time that they talk about is 0.72. Q, 0.28. All right, so in the Q is the minus allele. That's what that stands for. So now uh, let's do a little review here to our friend Mendel's Laws, and I'm just going to crank over to look at this here. Um, this is a guy, Mendel was a dude who played around with peas. He was quite the gardener. And if you remember, he played with round and wrinkle and all kinds of different things. And, and he was doing some math to it. And what I wanted to just show you really quickly, you know, he got in the dominant and recessive genes. And so you remember these little Punnett squares? And you can do bigger ones than this. It's just a simple Punnett square. And this the big D was representing dominant and recessive, dominant, and recessive, and you know, basically you're figuring out what's the, um, uh, the genetic ratio um, of, you know, in terms of the gametes, okay, what's the chances that, you know, this would be mom, this would be dad, and um, what are the chances that they would get some type of uh, phenotype, that's what that was representing, is phenotypes, things that we would see, right, okay, so um, let's go back to our PowerPoint. PowerPoint sideshow, there it is. So keeping that in mind, and minimize that, we can make a Punnett square for P and Q. P and Q. And remember, P represents the positive allele. Uh, that you ha sorry, they have that alu. Q means that you don't have the alu. Okay, so we can make a little Punnett squared, and what you can do is just Basically, it's just doing math here, basically, PP, PQ, PQ, QQ, all right? And so what you can do is say, okay, the chances are that you'd have, you have a P squared, you have a Q squared, or you have two PQs. And this is called the Heine, Heine, <laughs> that was funny, Hardy-Weinberg equation, and the total of this would add up to one. And so what you can do with this, this is for a population here, it's population analysis. You can use this information to see, okay, it's expected, the expected, use this Hardy-Weinberg equation, I said it better at the time, um, to get expected genotype frequencies. Now there's a bunch of assumptions that he used in there. I'm not gonna get into those details, but, um, you know, the, he had, uh, in statistics or math, he, usually if you're doing some something like an expectation, well, then you'd have to have some, some variables fixed. And he did have some variables fixed. Again, I'm not going to go into them, but... Um, so if we just use the Hardy-Weinberg formula and we plug in, we had just calculated out P squared. We had calculated out P, which was 0.72. 
and we calculated out um, Q, which was 0.28, and we just basically just run the numbers, okay? And so here we go. So everything, um, everything worked out there. And now the question is, okay, so given, given the Hardy-Weinberg equation where P squared expectation would be 0 0.52, 0 0.4, 0 0.08, and what you can do with that is you can multiply that times your population. Okay, so I know it's kind of funky math. Just just follow along. You're going to be doing this in class. Um, what you're going to do is take this p squared, multiply it times your population. And what it tells you is, hey, out of our out of our class, these 38 people, what we would expect to see is 20 people with um both the, the the alu inserts okay so 20 people would have plus plus 15 plus minus and three minus minus so that's what you can do with that so the numbers you know here's some math and it's getting kind of fancy and okay so here's just um a statistical analysis and basically it's called a chi squared test and um more statistics than we need to worry about um, but just want to give you the gist of it. The gist of it is that there's a critical value where if you're above, this comes from a statistical table. We're not going to get into that, but we're just going to go with this as 5.9. Okay, so if the number, when we actually run these numbers over here, when we run the numbers, if our chi-squared test is higher than 5.9, then what that means is our population is, the, you know, that class of 38. Are different than what's expected okay um, so running our numbers here what we end up with for x squared is 16.25 so what that means is our genotypic frequencies they're they're not nor it's it's out of the norm it's um and they have here not in genetic equilibrium so what that means is okay um, clearly some of those rules that I said, um, the Har Harvey Weinberg equation had would assumed, um, w they must have been broken. And one of them is that your, um, your population is stable from generation to generation, meaning that, okay, you know, that, uh, you know, people aren't migrating in and out. And obviously that's not going to be the case, but there were some assumptions that had to be made. So, what we're going to do with this information, and I'm just going to go through this really quick. We'll work on this in class. We're going to go on to this allele server, and it's Cold Spring Harbor's laboratory. You might remember that kind of came up when we saw the, the video about uh, Monsanto many moons ago. Um, so they're still around, and so we're going to be using information from there. And so this is just going to walk you through. I, I've never done this before. We're going to try it. So uh, I'm just clicking through here, just giving you a preview. We're going to go on to that spot there. It's called BioServers. We're going to enter the allele server and um, manage groups, select a group, and I'll, I'll set up a class for us. I guess some of the names are a bit, um, uh, let's say, salty. Uh, so that should be interesting. I heard it's quite interesting, some of the names. Uh, so anyways, we'll select our group, and you'll have to fill out a form here, okay? So just so you know, um, I'm not sure what all goes on there. Um, I don't, you know, I don't think there's going to be anything that we want to put in there. If you're concerned, put in some fake information. Um, I don't think it's going to ask like for your social security number or anything like that. Um, so then you go on to edit group and you edit your group information. Again, we'll go through this. I'm just flipping through here so you get a preview of what we're doing. So we click on the individuals tab and you're going to put in your own individual information for our group. And then we're going to click on done. And then what it's going to do is it's going to get us data. And we can compare, click on terse and verbose tabs. <laughs> I don't know what that all is going to get us, but it'll be interesting. So anyways, um, we'll be able to look at this data. Uh, we're, all, we're going to be calculating out stuff in advance, but here's a chi-squared stuff that, you know, so it's going to, it's going to show us our, our group compared to um, the populations. And I imagine there's lots of powerful tools on there. Uh, and that's called bioinformatics. Bioinformatics is utilizing... DNA databases, but also math, and that's where these guys come together, and it's very powerful. Just think for one nanosecond about all the DNA evidence that we have, and then, you know, if you need to make some population, you know, things like, or trying to figure out the chances of someone having some allele in our population, 
you've got to apply a fancy math to it. That's bioinformatics, and it involves supercomputers. There's lots and lots of information getting generated, and uh, not enough people power to do it. So that's where super supercomputers come into play, because they can analyze a lot of data really fast. So, quiz. When you guys come into class, remember what, I've, what I want you to get good at is a powerful visual. And I'm even going to tell you what page, I, with the visual, I want you to have in your head. I want you to have this visual in your head, and that if I give you a question that relates to this visual, that you can take it from there. So there's a lot, you know, there's not a whole lot on here. Making this shouldn't be very hard. Understanding that P is... Um, P is a positive allele, Q is a negative allele, not too hard. And figuring out how to drive that equation from here, not that hard. But that is something, I'll have a question that's going to definitely be related to this slide. You just have to know, have this visual in your head and you should be able to figure out everything else, alright? Well anyways, thank you very much and you guys have a fantastic weekend and I'll see you Monday.